Hi everyone, and welcome to Eric's Electronics Workbench. On the bench today, I have a Tektronix 2465B, which is a 400 megahertz, four channel, microprocessor controlled analog oscilloscope. So you can see the scope is sitting right over there, and the power supply boards are down here. So I've already disassembled it, and some work has been started on it. Now, this oscilloscope was in perfect working condition. There were no problems whatsoever with how it performed or functioned. Its measurements were very accurate. So you say, well, why is it taken apart? What happened? Well, let's jump in and I'll explain exactly what's going on and why this scope needed to be serviced. Now, over on the left side, you can see over here, that's a Hewlett Packard 3585A spectrum analyzer taking up a fair portion of the workbench. So uh, will be a little bit crowded working down at that end down there for this project. Um, that 3585A is almost wrapped up and we'll get that out of here. It's certainly taking up its fair share of space on the bench. So let's get started. Here we are looking down at the two power supply boards out of the Tektronix 2465B oscilloscope. So over here we can see the oscilloscope has been disassembled and whole bunch of parts and pieces all laid out over here, organized so I know where the hardware goes. Let's get it all reassembled again. But again, back to the power supply boards. It's a switch mode power supply. So the basic layout is that the AC voltage is applied to this section of the board. There's the main power switch right here. So this switch is activated by this lever right here. So when you press the power button on the front panel, this lever moves back. There's a pivot mechanism right here and it pushes on this switch. The switch latches on or off like that. So the AC voltage, uh, there's some filtering that goes on over here, uh, some inrush current limiting, and then there's a bridge rectifier uh, diode that converts the AC voltage to a DC voltage. Now, these two capacitors and two resistors right here were removed from this section. I'll talk about those in a moment. Right here, we, there are three pin connectors right here, and those match to this board. The boards are mounted back to back. There's also pin connectors here, a row of them right here. I think there's a couple others in another location, right, yep, right up here in the corner. So those tie these two boards together. So the DC voltage off of this bridge rectifier is applied to these bulk capacitors right here. So the high voltage DC is switched by the power MOSFETs and it drives at a very high frequency this transformer. So in a switch mode power supply, the advantage is uh, that you can have a transformer that's physically much smaller than a transformer that would operate at 60 hertz. The higher the frequency, the less iron you need in the core of the transformer. So. This transformer right here handles all the power needs of the oscilloscope, so very compact, very efficient. The output of this transformer is rectified by the diodes right here, another group down in here. Some filtering with various capacitors. Again, this section is linked back over to this section with those pin uh, connectors that run between the two boards, in there, down in here. So this section is uh, some voltage regulation, can see we have some transistors and voltage regulators down here. This uh, is acting as a heat sink. This mounts to the chassis inside the oscilloscope over there. Some filtering right here. And then right in here, there's some pin connectors that go off to some wire harnesses that uh, distribute the power into the rest of the oscilloscope. And this is a ribbon cable that ties into the uh, main part of the uh, oscilloscope circuitry. This insulator right here goes between the two circuit boards just as a safety precaution so that you don't have any short circuits. So this oscilloscope was functioning very well. There were no issues with it whatsoever. It was very accurate. The trace on the CRT looked very good. Uh, again, the accuracy was fine. So you say, well, why is it taken apart? What's going on here? You know, why, why is it disassembled to this uh, extent? Well, Tektronix snuck in some Rifa capacitors. So you, a Rifa capacitor is a brand of safety capacitor, and safety capacitors are used in many different electronic devices for numerous reasons. 
I did an entire video on safety capacitors and the reefa capacitors that fail. I'll put a link to that video in the uh, description below this video. So if you're interested in learning more about safety capacitors, you can see that video. I won't go into those details here. However, Tektronix in all their 2400 series oscilloscopes use the reefa capacitors and reefa capacitors were widely used in many, many types of uh, equipment. So they're very common to come across. And this oscilloscope was manufactured in 1989. Anything of that vintage, of that age, that has a reefa capacitor in it, it's just a ticking time bomb waiting to fail. This has been taken apart as basically uh, preventative maintenance, just to uh, correct the problem before it really becomes a serious problem. Because unfortunately, when the capacitors short out and completely go up in smoke, they often take out some other components or damage the traces on the board. That was the case about a year ago with my Tektronix uh, 2430A, which is a digital oscilloscope. And that 2430A was working very well on the bench. And one afternoon, the smoke alarm goes off and clouds of smoke coming out of the scope. And it was all because of a safety capacitor that let go and, and completely shorted out. So uh, that got a complete rebuild on its power supply and, and has been fine ever since. It did damage some other components on that uh, power supply as well. So again, um, easier to do the repair without having to deal with damaged traces and, and other damaged components. So over here, you can see these two capacitors. We also have two resistors. I'll talk about those in a moment. These are two of the safety capacitors. They were installed right here on the board and then right in here, okay? But they had to sneak in a few more on this board. We have a safety capacitor over here, here, and one tucked in right over underneath here, okay? Now on this board, these are the Y-class capacitors. The two on this board are the X-class capacitors. Again, the X and Y ratings on the capacitors and what all that means, I cover that in the other, uh, the other video. So something that I did not talk about in the previous video where I discussed the uh, reefa capacitors, I didn't go into taking the measurements and showing electrically what was going on with the capacitor and, you know, really how bad they actually are. So if you take a look at this capacitor here, they're very easy to spot when they begin to have their early stages of failure because you can see, if I get the light here, the cases start to get cracks in them. So you can see... Yeah, it's kind of an angle there. You can see that crack running through the case. And if you run your fingernail, you can actually easily catch, you know, and that, that's basically splitting open. This other one right here, no different. It's got the cracks going through the case right there. But again, it's more than just a crack in the case because electrically these are beginning to fail. So what I will do is, take some measurements um, on a uh, capacitor analyzer and we'll uh, see exactly how bad they actually are. Here's the, uh, the new replacement. You can see no problems there, brand new. Yes, they are Reefa for the replacements. I have had no issues whatsoever using the Reefa brand, the modern Reefa brand. Uh, they seem to have taken care of the problem over I would say the last 15 years or more that I've been using the current you know available replacements these are not old stock those are brand new from either DigiKey or Mauser typically who I buy them from had no issues whatsoever with them failing in any way uh, I know if you, uh, a lot of techs they like to uh, use a different brand they don't want to do anything with the Reefa perfectly fine you can certainly use other brands uh, sometimes the lead spacing isn't the same, so the Reefa, you know, this one and this one have exactly the same lead spacing. They drop right in on the board, makes the replacement easy. But if you feel better about going with a different brand, by all means do that. The main thing is to have the correct uh, X and Y ratings. Some safety capacitors are both X and Y rated. Uh, these you can see on the top right here, that says X2. The value is actually, uh, let's see, it's 0 0.068 microfarad, 68 nanofarad, okay? So when you replace these, they have to be the X2 rating, all right? Which you can see on the uh, replacement there. 
X2, and then the 68N, 68 nanofarad. So we'll take a measurement on the new and we'll compare it to the old and we'll see exactly how bad those actually are. Now something else that I found that was unexpected and needs to be uh, taken care of. On this board right here, you'll commonly see these on switch mode power supplies. This device right here, the circular disc, and then right here we have a circular disc. Those are known as NTC thermistors, and NTC is negative temperature coefficient, all right? So what these do is limit the inrush current. So when the switch is turned on, these capacitors over here, generally they have a bleeder resistor on them, so after the power supply sits for any length of time, they're discharged. So when they have no charge in them and you initially turn this power switch on, a very high current wants to flow into those capacitors to charge them up. And that high current can damage this bridge rectifier. So it's very common to see in switch mode power supplies these NTC thermistors. And these are specifically designed for this application. And what they do is they have a higher resistance when they're cold. And as the device heats up, the resistance goes lower. So initially you drop a higher voltage across these and then as they warm up. So they do get warm when they're operating. Uh, and as they warm up, less voltage is dropped across them and it's almost like taking them out of the circuit. They always drop a little bit of uh, voltage across them, but, but very negligible once they're, uh, are, you know, everything's up and running. So what I noticed was right here, it's been removed. You can see the little hole right there and right there. This resistor, see this one right here, goes this one, yeah. So this resistor is a 15 ohm, half watt. As you can see it's a uh, focus there. So the color bands on there are a brown, green, black with a gold band for tolerance. And if you can see on that resistor, it has sort of a, a blackened kind of area there. It's a little bit dark. It's a little hard to see because the, the band is also a black band right there. But if you can kind of see there's an extra sort of a little a little darkened area and like it looks like a little black almost like a smudge but it doesn't come off that that little black area is almost you can feel it it's almost like a little uh, crack in the in the case so I saw that and I thought well that that doesn't look right a resistor shouldn't have discoloring and things like that on it and these resistors are in parallel with these NTC thermistors so basically they're uh, a second path that the current can take uh, uh, because it's in parallel with this uh, NTC thermistor. And there's a second one over here, which I've removed, that's across or in parallel with this NTC thermistor. So again, it's just an alternate path. Uh, it's in the design of how they want the circuit to function and how much voltage is dropped. And you know, again, it's just how the, the circuit is designed. Sometimes you don't see a device in parallel. There is not a, a resistor in parallel. Well. This resistor here, and let's zoom in a little closer. Pardon the camera movement here. Can't quite see that here. I'll get this solder pole. Yep, you can see that. So this is the resistor with that little blackened sort of trace on it. It should be a 15 ohm resistor. And if we go across that resistor, absolutely open. You can see there is no continuity if you touch the leads together. But should be 15. And we have absolutely nothing. That is an open resistor, so completely defective. So anytime you're working on something like this, it's always good practice to look at the other components and see if there's anything that looks suspicious or needs any other attention because you never know what you might find. And in this case, that resistor needs to be replaced. This is the other 15 ohm resistor across that other NTC thermistor. It does check okay, but I'm going to replace it just because it's uh, probably been stressed, uh, you know, over the years of use. But you can see it, it measures spot on 15, 14, 9, 15. So no issues with it, but easy enough to just pull it off the board and replace it. 
my uh, replacements right here. Probes on there. Let's see that. Let's see that one. Fifteen point two. And this other second one right here. Fifteen point two. So those will uh, be installed, and that'll be in good condition, good order over there. So let me get the camera repositioned and we'll take a look at these uh, Rifa capacitors on the uh, capacitor uh, analyzer and we'll see exactly how they measure uh, when they're beginning to age and get those cracks appear in them and see, uh, see what they actually, you know, electrically how they uh, measure up and we'll compare them to a brand new one. Be back in just a moment. I have the Sencor LC102 set up to measure the Rifa safety capacitor. Again, this is that 0 0.068 microfarad with the X2 class rating. So I've set this up to have a plus minus 20% tolerance on the value for the capacitor. I believe these are rated 20%. Uh, I don't think they were a 10% on those. So if anything, the 20% will give us a wider you know, acceptance range. This will show good or bad if it's within that range. So again, the percentage I've done 20%. The capacitance value has been entered in, you can see 0 0.068, so it knows what the value should be ideally. The type of capacitor has been selected and we're at 250 volts when we do the leakage test. So for the capacitor value, and we can see it does say bad. It's out of the 20% uh, tolerance range. It's showing 0 0.1022 microfarad. All right, 0 0.1023. So it's reading a bit on the high side. Should be 0 0.068. Now keep in mind this unit was functioning and did power up, you know, with no issues. So this capacitor was in circuit and you know had not completely shorted out or had any drastic failure but you can see electrically it's drifting and it's uh, not you know reading where it should so definitely needs to be replaced the uh, leakage test and this is probably the most important one because you can see here the leakage test is not looking too good so we've got it does indicate bad and 21.8 microamps. You say, well, that's not a lot of current, you know, 21.5 microamps. Well, it's not right now, but what that means is that this is becoming leaky. So electrically leaky, it's turning into a resistor. So between the terminals, ideally this would be an open circuit. Okay, a capacitor should read as an open circuit. Many types of capacitors do have some leakage current, electrolytics, for example, but uh, mylar capacitors and uh, other types of capacitors, including this style, should have very, very low leakage current, basically an unmeasurable amount. It should say really zero or very close to zero on the screen. So when we do this leakage test, like so, and we're seeing you know 22.8 microamps, And you know, again, it says bad because it knows that uh, a reading that high is not acceptable for this type of a capacitor. All right, let me grab the second capacitor here and I'll get that hooked up and we'll take a look. Okay, here's the second 0 0.068 microfarad Rifa safety capacitor. So we'll do capacitor value. So it's also reading bad. So it's shifted a, too far off from where it should be. Almost 0 0.1 like the other one. This one's 0 0.0931, but it's come up in value. And if we do the leakage test on this one, So we're seeing 11 microamps, 10 microamps. We do have some current flow. And it does say bad. 
again, the tester knows for this type of a capacitor that really you should have almost no current flow whatsoever. This would be in the megaohm range across that if you were to look. In fact, we can flip this down here. So instead of looking at the current, we can actually look at what the resistance across that capacitor is. So right now we're getting about 23 megaohms, 24 megaohms. But ideally that would be much, much higher than that. So, and of course the capacitor, once it's cracked like this, it's only going to get worse. That resistance is going to keep going down lower and lower. More current will continue to flow and eventually it basically explodes and completely, you know, shorts out and uh, damages other things in addition to itself. So uh, it needs to be changed and we'll do that. We'll get those new ones installed. Now, one last thing here. Let's take a look at one of these brand new ones. So here is a brand new. All right. That stays there. All right. So capacitor value looking good, and it does say good on the screen. So 0 0.069293, and again, it's a rated at 0 0.068. So we're right, right where it should be there. No problems with that. And let's take a look at the leakage. I'm going to flip this back to current first. And it does say good. So that microamp reading, you can see, but compared to the uh, other two that are defective, uh, it's basically gone to zero. So an unmeasurable amount, you know, 0, 0.00 microamp. It's, uh, it's looking very good. And that's exactly what we want to see. If we put that on ohms, it's maybe beyond what it can measure. Let's see here. I think it's, yeah, when it flashes all eights like that, that's just an overrange. It's not going to be able to come up with any, any value because it's beyond what it can measure. It's probably well into the gig ohm range. So no problems with that new one. That's looking very good. So I'll go ahead and get those installed uh, along with those two resistors and then the uh, three on the other circuit board. And then we'll have to uh, reassemble the uh, oscilloscope and be able to put it back into service again. I have the four components replaced on this circuit board, the two safety capacitors, the resistor, and the resistor over here. So we'll move over to this other power supply board and I'll get the three safety capacitors replaced on that board as well. Now, if you're following along, you do so at your own risk. Power supplies like these switch mode supplies have uh, non-isolated sections of the circuit board where you have direct line voltages that are not isolated from the wall outlet. You have capacitors that store large charges. It could be lethal if you come in contact with them. So know the risks and dangers when working on equipment like this. And of course, the uh, oscilloscope has very high voltages around the cathode ray tube and other parts of the circuitry. So again, if you're working on something like this and following along, you do so at your own risk. Take care and be safe. The three safety capacitors are now replaced on the second circuit board. So the one under here, this one in the middle, and this one right here. So this capacitor and the one under here are both rated 2200 picofarad. The originals were a Y class rating. These replacements are an X and Y class rating. So it's perfectly fine to use a safety capacitor that has both an X and Y rating to it in place of one that was only X or only a Y rating. So no, no issues with that whatsoever. You wanna keep the capacitance value the same in your replacement and the voltage rating can be equal or higher than the original. So if we look at the originals here, you can see the uh, split in the case right there. This one, try 
at the light there and kind of see it across the center there. See there. And this one has quite a few little hairline cracks in it. See it there. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get the lighting on it there. Yeah, you can see it around the side over there. So all of them were definitely ready to fail at any moment. And um, I've seen it many times. They will definitely fail if, uh, if they're left in there long enough. It's just a matter of time. So good to get those changed out and replaced. The oscilloscope would be good for the long term. We won't have any issues whatsoever with it. So if you have a piece of vintage test gear, definitely take a look inside of it. You'll likely find these reefer capacitors. They're very, very common. And if you do come across them, get them changed out, replace them, and then you won't have any issues and they'll be good for the long term. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're enjoying the videos on this channel, don't forget to subscribe. So until next time, goodbye.